So the 27th day of the Omer is today, 27th day out of 49. And um, let's jump right in. Right in. Uh, a beautiful commentary by uh, the uh, teacher of the Slonomer, uh, Bet Avraham, um, on, uh, on a curious uh, mention, uh, curious reference in... Um, uh, in, in the instruction that the Torah gives us about the Sefirah to Omer. And here it goes. Let me uh, uh, read uh, uh, the description of the practice of counting every day from Passover through Shavuot uh, as it is brought in uh, Parshat Emor in this uh, in this week's Parsha. Ki el ha'aretz asher ani noten lachem uktsartem et ketzira and when you come to uh, the land that I uh, promise you, and you uh, harvest its uh, produce, and you bring the uh, bundle of, uh, of, of grain, um, of, uh, of the first bundles of grain uh, to, the, uh, to the priest, and pay attention here, and the priest will lift wave, henif, hanafa, is to lift, but harama is to really lift, raise up. Hanafa is to lift and and wave. So it's like an up and down motion, right? Uh, so when I say lift, I, let, let's think about this lifting but waving. Because there's other sacrifices where the Torah says, uh, you, you will lift up your... Um, uh, your contribution, your 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 sacrifice, your 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 gift, but here it's to lift and wave, and lift wave the omer lifnei Adonai lutzolchem at your will mimacharat haShabbat yanifenu hakohen after the Sabbath the priest will lift wave your um, your offering ulalan chtiv. And further on, it's uh, uh, written, "Svartim lachem imachat haShabbat." And after the Sabbath, with here is uh, referring, according to tradition, to the day after Passover. Miyom aviachem et omer tnufa from the day that you bring the um, the bundle of lift wave. You see, it's called the bundle instead of saying the bundle of barley. Um, it's saying the sheaf of the sheaf of the lifting waving, which is interesting. We'll get to that. Tisperu chamishim yom, you will uh, uh, count fifty days. Vikavtem min chachad hashar adonai, and then you will uh, 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 sacrifice or offer a new offering to the divine. Vimosh votachem taviu lechem tnufa, and from your residences or your plate your your dwellings, in other words, these are from the towns where you live. You will bring this to the priest in Jerusalem. So this is a pilgrimage, pilgrimage practice. Taviu lechem lechem tnufa shtaim. You will bring two breads of lifting waving. Again, notice that the bread is also um, described as the lifting waving bread. It's not white bread, not uh, you know, not whole wheat bread, not baked bread, but the lifting offering bread, just like the sheaf of the, of barley. You bring two of those bikurim laadonai as a first fruit gift uh, to God, and this is literally what the Torah says. And you can see that as I'm reading, we're all already hitting on uh, the delicious bumps <laughs> that will take us into the deeper meaning. And let's take this journey. Uh, this is another good one. Ve'esh lomar. This is uh, the Slonimer from uh, Netivot Shalom, <coughs> quoting his own teacher, Maran Admor uh, Beveit Avraham. Uh, this is actually his main source of inspiration. He quotes his uh, his teacher uh, a lot. Shayach Ozalav Kol Shana Lifnei Asfiyah Rishona. This is the teaching that uh, says the Slonimer that my uh, my my Rebbe, my master, would repeat every year before this period of counting the Omer from uh, right after Passover. 
שעניין ימי הספירה נרמז במאמר הכתוב the, um, the meaning of the days of counting <coughs> is hinted in a quote, a verse, and he's not quoting it, and I'm not familiar, I'm not, I don't know where this is, is exactly, could be Psalms, could be Proverbs. Uh, God, please uh, redeem uh, the human and the animal. God, please redeem the human and the animal. Okay, what is redeeming the human and the animal has to do with uh, counting the Omer. Here we go. Sha'omer karev miseorim she'ema chal be'ema. Since the Omer is, or the, the sacrifice, the giving of the, um, the offering of the Omer is... Um, is the is a is a give is a giving of barley, which is animal feed. Vishtehalechem, <clears throat> remember the two loaves of bread that are given at the very end of the counting on Shavuot are bread that's made from the wheat harvest. Uh, so um, the, it's parenthetically it's good to know that the barley harvest came first the barley was earlier to uh, to grow and to ripen and the next wave of harvesting was wheat so really this period between uh, Passover and Shavuot was a period of the growing of the barley or the harvesting of the barley <clears throat> and by the time we get to Shavuot which is the end of the spring that is the beginning of the harvesting of the wheat so it's good to know a little bit of uh, some agricultural details to also to appreciate the, uh, these ancient practices that obviously revolved around the agricultural cycles. So the two uh, loaves of bread are actually loaves of bread are actually uh, made from um, from wheat, and wheat is human food. Shizovudat yemesfira. And this tells us about the, um, the, the practice, the essence of the practice of the sefirah, of the counting, to purify from the animalistic or the animal aspect in us. And an animal is holy instinct. The animal does not have um, a life or spiritual life <clears throat> or a um, um, or a cognitive life that is um, greater than its instincts and desires. And to attain the aspect or the rung of human, human, capital H, right? It's very interesting. So he's showing you the connection like right away. The whole counting of the Omer, its purpose is to clarify out the animal instinctual desire part in us and to allow room for the full human potential, uh, the spiritual, the soulful, that, that which is more refined and more uh, sophisticated, more encompassing, um, what we would, if we wanted to be um, hierarchical about it, we would say that uh, the higher uh, level of, uh, of spiritual existence. And this is the, um, um, the, the, the meaning of the practice of Hatnufa, waving the Omer. So it doesn't yet tell us about the practice of waving, <laughs> but it tells us about the, the practice of counting and uh, bringing these two different types of, um, uh, of offering. Uh, the first is the barley-based offering, 
which is the sheaves of Omer that we bring to the temple each day over 49 days. On the 50th day, we bring two loaves of bread baked out of wheat, which is symbolizing the actualization of the full human potential. Now we're eating uh, food that's uh, really um, solely dedicated to human feeding. <clears throat> and the Son of continues, We also see the practice of lift wave, lifting and waving, with regard to the Levites, the tribe of Levi that was uh, designated among all the 12 tribes to be the one that um, serviced uh, the, the temple uh, rites, as well as served as musicians and priests who uh, uh, facilitated the sacrifices, etc. And Aaron, the high priest, lifted and waved the Levites before God. Now, what does that mean? Did Aaron actually take a priest, a mature person, and lift him up and wave him? It takes it takes a little um, a little comment a little, a little digging in to understand what's happening here. Well, let's stop here for a moment and and think about actual waving and lifting and waving in our own experience. So, um, just to say that maybe it was literally so. Maybe Aaron had a few attendants, the high priest. And he had them, you know, grab this Levite, this person who's being uh, inducted, initiated into priesthood. And maybe they're just lifting, you know, maybe, it, you know, four, five, six guys could lift somebody up in the air and up, down, up, down. And maybe that was part of the ceremony. We don't know. The Torah is not explicit about that. So we kind of have to guess about, you know, what do these ceremonies in the temple look like? Perhaps, right? But what's the deeper meaning? How do we lift and wave? Let's go back. Do you remember? I barely remember. But let's go float it back to when we were really young. And our father or mother lifted us up in the air with great delight, you know. Uh, you know, booby, mootsy, pootsy, wonderful, you know, sweetheart. Whoa, up and there you go and down. Up and there you go and you're giggling. And you know, babies giggle and laugh when you do that with them. Let's step into that for a moment. If I was my parent baby, and I'm in this, in this pure place, this initial, pure, um, unencumbered yet by life, you know, baby or toddler place, and my parents are lifting me up and, and throwing me in the air and catching me and up and down and 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 there's this delight, there's this flight, literally, um, and and the love that comes with it, right? It's like I'm not just being thrown. <laughs> hopefully, some so on occasion you'll see a parent that's a little overdoing it and you kind of like wonder, whoops, it's like, like calm down a little bit, you know, have some mercy mercy for your child. But but most of the time, this is this is a lifting up of, of the parental love that raises you up to uh, you know to the heavens, perhaps. Remember those feelings? <laughs> I think it's uh, useful to uh, remember that when we think about the practice of lift wave of the Levites, for instance. And we'll connect that in a moment to uh, the sheaves of, of barley, you know, lifting and waving as a spiritual practice. And I'll continue here with, with the quote from uh, uh, Bamidbar from Numbers. Aaron, uh, and Aaron lifted the Levites uh, as a, a lift offer before uh, God. And they were now initiated, they were now um, installed 
as um, in, in the service of, of the divine service in the temple. And thus you will um, you will separate uh, or dedicate the Levites from among all the people of Israel, and they will be Levites for me, or priests for me. And here it says, get this, Aaron the priest actually lifted and waved each Levite as they were initiated before God. Why? Now he's explaining. And, and with that act, with that ritual act, the high priest lifted the Levite from his or her, I'm just I'm thinking to say to assume that it was uh, uh, his, him, uh, from his ordinary state, from his place of being in ordinary life, and lifted him up to higher service. To be um, holy to the divine. And to be uh, ready for divine service. So it's physicalizing this lifting from a Joe Schmo, a pedestrian, to now being at you know at at the service of God in the temple and you know dedicated like you know we can uh, uh, think of monks and and nuns in different traditions who dedicate their whole lives. And they're kind of lifted from, you know, the ordinary uh, state of being a, a normal citizen, as it were, to being somebody, a, a man or woman of cloth, as it were. Al derech ze at nufa ha'amura ba'omer, at nufa ve'lechem at nufa, hi ikar mitzvatam. And in the same way, the lifting waving of the sheaves of the Omer and of the two loaves of bread is the essence of that practice, of that mitzvah. It's not the bringing of the sheaves of the Omer, it's not the bringing of the bread per se, but it's the lifting, raising, and waving. That's the essence of the mitzvah, they tell us. In other words, if you brought your sheaf and you kind of just dropped it there, all right, there it is. <laughs> that doesn't do it. Same with the bread. Here's my sacrifice. See you later. Thanks. <laughs> That's not how it works. There's, you, we need to do that. We need to do that motion, that, that embodiment. And he says, in that symbolizes the the, the 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 purpose of it and the essence of it is that a person, a Jew, be shaken up, right? The waving, right? Shaken up <laughs> from worldly existence. And one should um, toss oneself, raise oneself, towards the divine. Something beautiful about that, to, to, to understand the choreography and, um, and the meaning of it and the felt experience of it, I think makes a big difference. I can really, I hope you, you're traveling back to uh, Temple Days with me. And you're just watching, you know, watching this is, what a ballet. <laughs> or if you're into modern dance, what, what, what a dance. And how energetic it is and how real it is. So we're stepping into that. Zehu Yehuda shel kol tkufat yemei now, this is the purpose of the whole period of counting the Omer from after Passover all the way up to Shavuot. Shehem, kmoshe katava ramban, 
בבחינת חול המועד ארוך. Because these days, as the Ramban, Rabbi Moses ben Nachmanides, uh, 13th century great sage and commentary, uh, teaches us that this, the whole 49 days of counting is like a long intermediate days. So if you're not familiar with the term, explain quickly, you know that we have the beginning of Passover and then after seven days we have the end of Passover and the days in between are called the intermediate days Chol HaMoed. So it's sort of semi-holiday, you know, we're not, uh, we still are eating matzah and, and uh, avoiding um, chametz, uh, you know, leavened products, but we go to work, we, you know, if we can, we take a vacation, but we, it's sort of semi-holidays and, and Prayers are a little different, practices are, are a little different, but uh, we do go about our business. And the Ramban teaches us that the 49 days, the seven weeks, right, this is seven times seven between Passover and Shavuot, is like intermediate days. If you think of Passover through Shavuot as, uh, as a long holiday, one long holiday, so, um, you know, this is, these would be the intermediate days. Uh, and during those days, a person um, shakes off uh, all of the trivialities of, of, um, of the world. Because after the holiday of uh, the celebration of Passover and after the actual leaving um, leaving of Egypt, because it says, mm-hmm. In every generation we should uh, experience, we experience Passover as if we're actually leaving Egypt. This is like a reenactment. Mm-hmm. And at that time, they, the, the Jewish mission, the people were dedicated to the divine uh, formally, uh, come the days of the counting of the Omer, and he repeats it again. And this is the, 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 the task of those days is to uh, shake us up, shake us away from or out of uh, this ordinary world. And we do it with the lifting, waving of the sheaves of, sheaves of barley and uh, the two loaves of bread on the 50th day. And thus we're lifting ourselves, we're shaking ourselves away from ta'avot behemiot with the, with the lifting, shaking of the uh, waving of the sheaves of barley. We are shaking ourselves away from our animal desires and with the lifting and waving of the bread we're shaking ourselves or waving ourselves away from our human lower desires. That's a teaching. <laughs> so this is a, this is a pra- practice of daily purification. You can think of, of it as a um, uh, you know, like you have a twelve step program. Uh, here we have a forty nine step program. Right, so for 49 days, day after day after day, we are, uh, biblically, the way uh, we did it is we actually enacted this uh, waving of uh, produce, which uh, was energetically, symbolically, and spiritually uh, waving away of uh, the desires that hold us back, that hold us imprisoned, right? and an elevating of our vibrational level from the animal lower vibrational level, which is about immediate instincts, immediate desires, uh, pleasure and pain, flight and uh, uh, fight or flight, um, to a higher vibrational level of the, the human, right, Adam, capital H, of spiritual attainment, right? And let me conclude here with the last paragraph of the Slonomer on, on uh, 
on this. It's uh, it's a beautiful conclusion. When a person, a Jew, wants to leave Egypt, and remember what Egypt metaphorically means, Mitzrayim, Makom Tsar, narrowness. So when we want to go from the narrow vibration, from the constricted place, the place where we're limited, to the place of all possibilities, which is uh, which is the land of Israel symbolically, or um, uh, Eretz Hakodesh, the Holy Land, right? Holy, wholesome, all possibilities, the whole world, right? Is is there for you? The worlds, not only this world, but really all dimensions, the fullness of the spiritual capacity, is there? The Holy Land. There is a phenomenon, that which we all know, that the force of the constriction of the outside opposing forces becomes greater. And the, the opposing forces do not want to let a person be liberated. No, stay here, stay stuck. We're going to hold you down even stronger. And that's why the Holy One has given us these 49 days of counting. As it is says also in the, in, in the little paragraph, the prayer the, of the intentionality before counting the Omer, and uh, up to now we talked about counting the Omer biblically, which was uh, with an agricultural uh, right, but the way we do it now is through liturgy. So we say a bracha and we say a little, you know, this little paragraph, and the paragraph says, "Litahel miklipotenu mitimotenu." So during these uh, uh, these forty nine days, we purify, we cleanse through our effort, meditation and, and prayer and uh, contemplation, we purify ourselves from the shells and the lower vibration energies. Kripotenu, umitumotenu. That are holding us down. Let's say I have an addiction. I really want to get rid of it. If you have had that experience, you know that the more you try to quit smoking, the more you try to quit drinking, the more you try to quit other addiction, the larger the desire to be stuck in that addiction is. And so it is for many of the shortcomings for the lower vibration um, circumstance and, and, and energies, forces that are work, in, work in us. So here we have 49 days where we cleanse those away cleanse the opposing forces, liberate, liberate ourselves gradually. He's using a verse, until a person is merits and attains the, the space, the p'china means aspect, but really means energy, the the, the, the the mindset that, that, that the people of Israel have stood at the, at the foot of Mount Sinai and all their impurities were cleansed away. So that's the state that we're, we're looking to. That's the cleanliness. That's the, that, that's the purity that we're, we're looking for. Completely clean. Every day, a little bit, by the end of 49 days, on the 50th day, at Shavuot, we're standing at the foot of Mount Sinai. Again, we're reenacting it. It's as if we ourselves are doing that. And we're claiming our full self, you know, being made in the divine, the divine image. And this is the purpose, actually, of all holidays, of all the uh, all the festivals that um, that the Holy One has given us, 
um, says the Sonomer, to help a person, a Jew, to leave Egypt, to leave the narrow place, and to come to that place, and this is back to the original verse from, again, I have not researched this, but it's, I'm, I'm guessing that it's either from Proverbs or from, uh, from the Psalms, if you know, by the way, please uh, uh, please write that in the comments. I, I'd love to know what, where this quote is from. Adam uveimato shira Hashem. You come to the place where um, a human and an animal, you have redeemed Holy One. Nafoch mibchinat behema, meaning that we are transforming from the aspect of animal soul, Levchinat Adam, to the aspect of the human soul. And this is this is a conclusion now. I want to prepare you because I love it. Hasholet al atzmo bechol inyanav. He's defining what he means by coming into the aspect of the human soul. A person who is a master of himself or herself and all her endeavors. A master of myself and all my endeavors. Mastery. An amazing vision. Uh, with great gratitude here to uh, the Holy Slonimer for um, really helping us understand an archaic uh, biblical practice uh, that we uh, we now um, observe as a more of a, as a prayer practice, and the depth of it, and uh, the goal of it, to be a master of myself, my destiny, and my endeavors. Uh, may we all be blessed. Uh, with that, we're going to conclude. I'm Rabbi Ruben Modik, with uh, Makom Halev Community here in Nyack, New York. It's a beautiful day today. Uh, please comment. Let's let's continue the conversation. Like us. Subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. If you're in the New York area, drop a note to drop by, um, and come back for more uh, here at our Cyber Yeshiva uh, almost every day. In fact, I'm going to be away uh, this weekend, so uh, I won't be back um, online until uh, probably Monday. Wishing you a Shabbat Shalom. And may all your higher desires be fulfilled. Be fulfilled. Amen. Shalom. Goodbye for now.